What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to the channel, and a happy Bobby Bonilla Day to you all, folks. And when we look back at what was such a poor contract for the Mets, and an overall poor move, even though that, yes, we had the Wilpons to blame, now let's fast forward to today on a potential strong move for this current Mets lineup, and that is based on the breaking news reports we've seen over the past half day, originally broken from John Heyman of the New York Post, but also posted here through SNY, that, yes, the New York Mets are one of multiple clubs checking in and showing interest on the star infielder outfielder dh for the baltimore orioles and yes trey mancini so that's all well, be deep diving in today's discussion everything that you need to know about trey mancini and his game the likelihood unlikelihood of mancini even landing in queens and what potential impact could he have for this mets lineup should they acquire him by the deadline and so much more so as always folks make sure you stay all the way till the end of the video follow me to know my thoughts on trey mancini and his potential here with the new york mets and again folks if you found yourself enjoying this kind of mets content and you want to see more great mets content like this this. Don't hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe button. Sharing this video with your friends. Pop the notification bell. All those great things. Thank you all so much for the continued support, folks. Now let's hop right into today's video. All right, guys, funny enough, I've had yet to discuss Trey Mancini on the channel because last week in my video on five position player targets for the New York Mets, I didn't have Mancini in there, and I'm really glad that I didn't, so that way I can share my raw thoughts and reactions to this report now. But if you haven't checked out that video, I highly suggest you do after this one. Links down below, as always, folks, along with my latest top five video, which is on starting pitching targets for the Mets that came out yesterday. And next week, stay tuned. I will have a video out on reliever targets for the Mets, too. A lot of fun stuff coming as we get closer to the trade deadline. But Mancini, when I saw this report by John Heyman initially, I was pumped up. I absolutely love Trey Mancini. He's always been one of my favorite players in the league, especially in the AL. He's someone that, again, by no means is he going to be great defensively, but he gives you versatility, which makes him a little bit more appealing than some other options out there that are just strictly a DH. Now, Mancini, is he a stud in right field? Is he a stud at first base? No, not necessarily, but he is a guy that, again, can play in the infield, play in the outfield, but is known for that DH position. And why is that important, you might ask? Well, Buck Showalter has been utilizing the DH this year in a way that he has been helping with defensive alignment and really based on the pitching matchups with the opposing starting pitcher. So he's been creative with his laps every single day and you bring in someone like Mancini and he, unlike someone like Nelson Cruz, is not stuck at just the DH position. If you have to put him at first and have Alonzo there at DH, perfectly fine. If you have to even have him in a right field at times, if say Marte needs an off day or if you want to get creative based on lineup and based on the pitcher you're facing, you can do that too so i like the creativity that someone like trey mancini brains but not just that buck knows trey mancini really well because trey of course started his career in 2016 out a cup of coffee but broke out in the years 2017 2018 to really find his swing being a consistent 20 plus bomb home run hitter and buck showalter yes you guys probably know was his skipper during that time from 2016 to 2018 that was his final season in baltimore buck has said nothing but glowing things about trey in the past i'm sure he's doing that right now assumably the mets have asked for some input from the front office down on Mancini as they are currently on a pursuit for him and among reports as of late the market for Mancini is heating up so maybe just maybe he'll be a guy that's dealt prior to this year's trade deadline which very well can mean that the Mets are in the hunt to land someone like him but if you look at some comments here a great tweet a quote here as the Mets were looking to acquire Buck this past offseason as you see the tweet from Mets rewind shout out to them was a quote from yes Trey Mancini on Buck Showalter as a manager and it's the following and I quote it's kind of an unsaid thing you won't get too many pump up speeches but you just know he expects to get your business done and he trusts you to do it he does a great job of running a team so again simple to the point all he knows is that there's no bad blood between the two that's been reported at least they seem like they, they have a strong connection and again i'm sure buck would love trey mancini in this lineup and i'm sure trey would love to be acquired by a team that's going on a run this year let alone being in new york we know the italian american heritage that we have going there i'm a fellow italian american myself and the mets know a thing to do about acquiring paisans that end up doing well in queens intent on the man behind uh, on the wall behind me right but talking about trey talking about the italian stuff aside and also talking about how amazing of a man he is overcoming the biggest obstacle of them all in life with cancer was out for the entire 2020 season as he was dealing with cancer overcame it just like cookie Carrasco did a couple years ago with leukemia absolute studs an amazing story again you cannot dislike trey mancini Came back last year at over 20 home runs, over 70 RBIs, an all-star. Was in the home run derby, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pete Alonzo, which was so fun to see. But Trey, again, yes, I know he's a righty bat, and most Mets fans, including myself, would prefer a lefty bat like a guy like Josh Bell that I would love, but it's really a 1A, 1B. I would love a lot of players out there that the Mets could acquire offensively, 
and one thing that they have made abundantly clear of recent reports is that they want to acquire a bat it's not a matter of if but when that is basically guaranteed because they are not happy with what they've seen from jd and dom which have been anything but consistent at the dh position for the majority of the season but knowing that the mets do not want to top uh, part with top prospects for a position player which means that if you're going to acquire a guy he's either going to be a rental or at most on a two-year deal and that's where mancini is right in that perfect middle he's a 30 year old again right-handed bat is not a free agent at the end of this year but it's a mutual option with him and the organization a 10 million dollar deal so assuming that that mutual option is picked up he is in a free agent in 2024 so no long-term commitment to someone like him which i know the mets wouldn't be looking for at this juncture with acquiring someone of his nature but still trey mancini has been a stud this season seven home runs 30 rbis you see here as well having a total of a 280 average at 350 on base or so and just under 800 ops and in case you're wondering why are the mets interested heavily potentially in someone like trey when he hasn't been phenomenal with the home run ball this year have to realize folks of the ballpark he's playing and it is so difficult for right hand hitters to get that ball out of the park now with how the field has changed with the wall there in baltimore if you look at his numbers through baseball savant guys do it yourself he is projected if he was hitting every single game in city field this year folks he would have 17 home runs so yes he would be thriving in city field not just with the mets and this fandom in new york but especially at the ballpark it favors him and the type of hitter that he is the thought of him and Alonzo back to back in the lineup is absolutely disgusting and looking further on his numbers here as well folks he has been among the elite hitters in baseball through baseball savant further he is in the 91st percentile in xwoba expected batting average he's in the 90th percentile expected slugging 89th percentile hard hit rate max x of velo all in the 70s to 80s there barrel k percentage all above average walk percentage just above average chase rate whip rate just around average this guy has not been doing anything wrong this entire year i'm fully confident that should he be dealt to a different team that he's one gonna get that home right up and have potentially upwards of 30 bombs a season but is also someone that again can thrive in queens with the mets this is the exact type of hitter they're looking for outside of a lefty bat this is the next best thing if they say can't land josh bell or can't land someone else to a similar magnitude again there aren't a lot of great position players available at this year's deadline that are either rentals or on two years of control mancini is surely one of them however and the thought of him pairing back with buck having that connection would be phenomenal in itself but knowing that this is a guy that can help take the mets over the hump as an offense that while it's been really strong this year other than the slump over the past couple weeks here in june the biggest thing that they have lacked far and on is yes the home run ball if they can add that which is, which is what they would assumably get in trey mancini that'd be massive now will they be able to outbid other teams that's a good question because again mancini he's not going to cost you an arm and a leg because he's not on a long-term deal however he's not necessarily going to be cheap either but the mets looking at baltimore maybe they could swing a deal for not even just mancini but a reliever or two because the orioles have some really nice young stud relievers that could benefit the mets right now in this bullpen which is the exact thing that they need more than anything in addressing this roster by the trade deadline so there's a lot of options all he knows is that obviously the Orioles would rather part with Mancini to the Mets than say the Yankees or any other contending teams in the AL and surely he looks like he'll be a strong fit in Queens something that I am by all means in favor of as I am in favor of most batters out there that the Mets have been pursuing to this point but Mets fans that'll do it for this video so let me know all your thoughts in the comments below how do you feel about Trey Mancini landing with the New York Mets do you think it's gonna happen do you think it's not gonna happen if you don't want to see Mancini land with the Mets what is a position player that you would like to see the Mets go out and acquire make sure to let me know all your thoughts in the comments below and again folks if you found yourself enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this you know the drill by now smashing that like and subscribe button sharing this video with your friends put the notification bell all those great things thank you guys all so much again for the continued support stay tuned for more great content not just trade content individual video content post-game content in-game live streams all that fun stuff coming throughout the season and I'll talk to you guys all again real soon let's go Mets baby